It's an annual event. The reason we invited Jean Darling is not just the fact that she appeared in the Love and Hardy film, but she knew them quite well on the lot. So I'll pass the microphone to Jean. So tell us about working with Love and Hardy. Anyway, I saw this dapper man standing by the artificial pool that they had. They had this pond about 30 feet square on the Roach Love. And I wanted to catch minnows because there were minnows in there. So being a rather wise little girl, I knew you could cut with cups. So what I did was I got a cup and I put a string on the cup, but I didn't sink the cup in the water. I let it float on the top and looked helpless because no fish went in it. So of course, this dapper gentleman had to help me. And then from there, we got to trying to teach me to, to uh, toss skip stones. And then from there, we got to uh, and teaching me to whistle, which I still can't do. Didn't work. And uh, that's how I got to know Stanley. You see, I was a smart little cookie. Now, uh, what else? What, Babe? You want me to tell about Babe? No? Okay. And Babe, he couldn't stand it because um, um, Stan called me Jeannie Weenie Little String B, and this made, made Babe want to upchuck. He just did not like that. And so I didn't get to know him right away. I just had pictures on his shoulders and on his back, and, but I, that was all. It was just stills. And then I got very interested because our, the, our gang uh, stage was here. Well, I'll do it here on my knees. The Art Gang stage was here, and, Hel and the, the Laurel and Hardy stage was here. And in between was a loading bay, and then there was the uh, prop department. And so we could go from one stage to the other, but we were not, the gang kids were not allowed on stand and Babe set because Babe did not like kids. And I can't blame them. They were pretty horrible, you know, <laughs> running around and screaming and want to play baseball and everything when they were off, off camera. And I kept wandering in, I wanted to watch, and he kept throwing me out. And then finally he gave up, because I kept wanting to watch. And he said, if you're very quiet, you don't make a sound, and you're always ready for your work over there on the set. You don't hold a production or anything, you can watch. And so after a while, he got me a little chair. I had one on my set, and then he got me another one on his set. And after a shot, he would come over to me and he would say, well, what do you think about that? And so I would tell him. And he'd say, oh, and walk away. And I got so angry because he'd never tell me, told me what, you know, whether I was right or wrong when I tell him something. And that was the best thing that he could have done because if he told me if I was right or wrong, I would have uh, said, okay, I got that in my head, I'll go on to the next thing. But not telling me, I would keep watching and watching and watching, and I have found that all my life that it has helped me with when I started writing mystery stories, when I started writing, it, it helped me with writing. Because you've read books, all of you have picked up a book and read it, and not got past the first page because you just could not read what the person had written, it was too turgid, it was too something. And because they taught me rhythm and timing and all of this, I could take that on with my writing and use the rhythm and timing. And so that was, he taught me all what I know. So what else? All right, tell us about Stan Fancy your mother. Oh, yes, well, Stan fancied my mother. Lois got ballistic when she read about that. She went absolutely ballistic because I think everybody knows Stan was a ladies' man. He was dapper and he was stylish and he had charm and a twinkle. 
and um, anyway, he took, he fancied my mother. He was always coming on to our set and squatting down by her chair. And he took me, he took us to the circus and he took me to the beach and I buried the rabbit he got me at Easter in the sand. And it's probably still there somewhere, <laughs> this big rabbit. And he was the, oh yes, as a matter of fact, if, if my mother hadn't been such a prude, he might have been eventually my father. But you see, he was evil. He had not only been married before, he was not even divorced yet from that wife. He was in the midst, but he was didn't have the final thing. But even if he had, he was somebody else. He was second hand as far as my mother was concerned. And she wasn't going to fool around with any second hand property. And uh, so, but he was just as nice to me afterwards. I mean, just because she, she, she ditched him. Uh, he didn't change towards me. He would still sneak me, sneak me um, good humors. That's ice cream on a stick and cokes. I wasn't supposed to have them because I was always too fat, and I was always on a diet because I was. And the, he would sneak them, and then we'd eat them behind flats. We'd go into the into the uh, prop department and eat ice cream in secret. And he taught me to chew balsa wood. So you see, he's had an evil, evil, evil. Uh, I still like ice cream, but I haven't chewed balsa, balsa wood lately. Yes. <laughs> Ask the audience have they got any questions. I thought you were supposed to interview me. I've been doing a monologue. <laughs> What about Hal Roach? Did you actually have any contact with Hal himself? Oh, of course I did. There's a picture over there with me with Hal Roach, and there's a little harmonica. And that was my was one of the first publicity stills I had when I finally, I was, well, I was fired. I, he, he told you I was fired after the first three comedies. But he, and he gave me this little harmonica that I have around my neck. And I never learned the harmonica. But he was always very nice, and like uh, when I, um, Joe Cobb and Farina taught me to write in joined up letters because Mrs. Carter thought I was too young to waste time with, that was our teacher. And so I'd stand by their chair and they gave me a piece of paper and I taught to write in joined up letters. And they decided, Hal Roach decided he was going to give me a pile of pictures. And I was supposed to autograph them because he thought that was pretty good there. I can write. My God, I'm, what, I'm four years old. I can write and join up letters. So I wrote, from your little F-I-E-N-D, Jean Darling. And he had an absolute fit because he thought it was not a good idea for them to send out pictures of me signed, your little fiend, Jean Darling. So he took me over to the uh, photograph studio and I signed a, a, a negative and he stood there and made sure I put in the R. So what else? And there were a lot of things. He did a lot of things. He gave us presents and had a, gave us parties and everything. He was very nice. And he was his son. His son used to row me around the little lake and he had a rowboat and he'd row me around the little lake. Go ahead. Did you meet Charlie Chase? Of course I knew Charlie Chase. Why wouldn't I? I did, I did a couple of comedies with him, and I don't know what happened. And well, you'd have that, I won't tell you, because that's in my book. And they didn't even, they, Dick Bond didn't even find it out and put it in uh, the Our Gang book. And I just don't understand why he did not know that, because that, 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 was, that was just tittle-tattle on the lot. And I don't know why. There were a lot of pictures, films were lost. I, I mentioned it in my book, and I, sh I have a picture. I have a picture standing in front of it, of, from the front of the thing that proves I'm right. So it's a, uh, but, uh, oh no, Charlie was nice. His, his, his brother, his brother was sad. Anyway, go ahead. I believe there's been a lot of Jean Darling lookalikes at conventions. How do we know you were genuine? Look alike's my foot. They don't look like me. 
and they're not like me. I don't know. You just have to take me on faith, I guess. But I think, I really think that I look enough like myself when I was younger. I don't think that uh, everything is lost. <laughs> Uh, but I, I think you can you know I need because of my pictures because I have pictures at different ages over there. Now they've been a lot of things like that. This, there was this one woman who was looking in the lonely hearts and finding lonely hearts and writing them and asking them for money in my name. And uh, that really broke my heart because I don't like hurting people. I don't like doing that, that that's, that's fraud and this is not me. And I think that's cruel. So what else? I think that's all really. Yeah, where did we know? Okay, okay. <laughs> so bye bye. Does uh, anybody want anything else? Do you want to ask any questions? Any questions? Sing, sing your song. Sing your song. If a steamship weighed 5,000 pounds and sailed 10,000 miles With a cargo large of overshoes and carving knives and files If the mates were over six feet high and the bows and near the same Would you subtract or multiply to find the captain's name? Oh.